Right, so this week I'm talking with Shannon O'Meara, who teaches 7th and 8th grade history at ASU Prep. Oh, and 9th grade. And 9th grade, that's right, I forgot. <laughs> yes. We ask a lot of our teachers here, and you're doing a great job at that. Um, so what made you go and decide to go into teaching? Uh, well, it was kind of a long road. I got my bachelor's in art history because I love art. And then afterwards I was deciding, what can I do with this degree? The answer was pretty much nothing. So I said, okay, what do I want to do with my life? And I decided that um, I really wanted to, I've always loved teaching. Um, I used to teach youth group and things like that. But um, I thought that teaching history would be a great way to bring art into um, my students' lives. Because unfortunately, the arts have been cut all over the place and um, a lot of people don't have the exposure to great works of art and I thought I could use history as a great medium through which to teach ah, art also. That's so. fantastic. So, so in what ways are you doing that with your class this year? Can you um, give some examples? Oh yeah, definitely. We look at definitely a lot of political cartoons in my classroom, so that's a good form of art. We also look at different art pieces. Even uh, next week with my eighth grade, we're, talking to start, we're starting to talk about World War II and uh, we'll talk a little bit about how uh, Hitler supported Franco in the uh, um, Spain, Spanish Civil War. And so we'll look at Guernica from uh, Pablo Picasso. And uh, we look at different works of art so they can see what's going on through art. So I'll ask them to like create hypotheses about what's going to happen or uh, what they see by what they see in the work of art. Wow, I love so. that. That's, that's <laughs> terrific. Uh, and so, as a history teacher, uh, what is one of your favorite uh, areas or, or time in history that you enjoy teaching students? What is your, your favorite point of history that you like to teach? Um, I think I have two, if that's okay. Okay, sure. Um, I, am, I love teaching the Civil War, and that was great because I got to teach that with my seventh grade this year. I think that's kind of passed down, though. My dad is a huge Civil War nut, and so um, I've been indoctrinated with loving <laughs> the Civil War. Um, so I love teaching the Civil War, and I also love teaching um, like World War II and the Holocaust because I like the humanity aspect of it. I think it's uh, good for them to, um, to see that maybe not everything is pretty all the time, um, but it doesn't have to be that way, and we can do things to change it. And maybe if certain things were different, then those things wouldn't have happened, and they definitely don't have to happen again. So I like them to see the humanity aspect of it. Good. This was actually a question that somebody asked me, so I'm going to ask you the oh same gosh. thing, and that is um, <laughs> history and government isn't necessarily taught on our, our state aims test, and so what is your thought about that? Do you think that should be something that should be taught on the aims, or why or why not? Well, I think it's something, I think, as with what I talked about with the Holocaust, there's a lot of... Um, like uh, humanity to teaching social studies and government. It's, it's a lot about people and stories, and I think that's difficult to test. However, I do feel, looking for the word, um, I feel disappointed that it's almost not valued enough to be tested. So I wish it held more value so it was tested on the aims. And I hear they're developing a test, um, but uh, I think it would be a difficult thing to test because right. uh, uh, something that I emphasize, I don't really emphasize dates so much. I mean, they need to know when it happened, like a time frame, but I don't emphasize specific dates, uh, more cause and effect, um, more understanding what was going on, not so much dates. And I think if we did do a names, it would be more dates. I think one of the unique aspects from your background is you used to be a tour guide at Disneyland. Could you talk a little bit about that? Uh, yes. Um, when I was in college, I did the uh, Disney internship program, and I was a Jungle Cruise skipper at uh, Walt Disney World down in Florida, and it was it was amazing. When I retire, that's what I want to do with my life. Making magic was the best thing that um, uh, I could have done at that point in time. So, so you made the uh, corny, that's the backside of water joke many I did. times. I did. <laughs> backside of water is a classic. It must always be told. Okay. <laughs> I feel a bit slighted when they don't tell it. <laughs> I agree. Uh, and so one of the things I always like to do in these interviews so that our parents and, and people watching can get a better understanding of who our teachers are, what are some of the things that you like to do in your free time when you're not teaching? Um, I, I love going to the museum. I, I'm a frequent at the Phoenix Art Museum. Um, I love to read and spend time with my family. 
right now I don't get to do much of that. <laughs> um, I, I'm getting married in October, so my whole life right now is doing that. <laughs> Understandable. <laughs> so, so um, but those are things I, I really love doing. Well, and it's amazing you have time to do any of that because I know how dedicated you are to our <laughs> students today as you prep. Everyone here loves having you here. You're a great teacher. Oh, thank so you. <laughs> we're so happy that you're, you're one of our teachers here. Oh, thank you. I love being here, so it's wonderful. Good.